In order to install the Detroit Speed stub axles, first remove the stock stub axles from the rear differential. Drain the fluid while removing the rear cover. Remove the cross shaft bolt pin from the carrier and push the cross shaft out of the carrier. There is a shim under the pinion gear inside the carrier that the cross shaft goes through. This shim can slide out of alignment or even fall into the carrier. Make sure the shim does not move when the cross shaft is reinstalled. With the cross shaft out of the carrier, slide the stub axles into the differential in order to remove the snap rings. Slide the stub axles with the dust shields out of the differential. The stock stub axle ends may be worn and mushroomed over. You may have to tap or hit the stub axles to get them out of the carrier. Slide the Detroit Speed stub axles with the new provided dust shields into the rear differential. Install the provided snap rings onto the new stub axles. Verify that they are located in the grooves correctly. Slide the stub axles out against the snap rings. Reinstall the cross shaft and verify the alignment shim is in the correct location. Reinstall the cross shaft pin bolt with high strength red Loctite on the threads and tighten. Reinstall the rear cover onto the differential using ultra gray RTV silicone and torque the cover bolts to 20 foot pounds. Fill the differential with gear oil. Install the upper differential bracket assembly to the tapped holes in your rear differential cover using the provided 716's hardware. Use medium strength blue Loctite on the threads and tighten. Torque the upper differential bracket to 50 foot-pounds. Disassemble the IRS upper and lower cradle assemblies from each other by removing the 716's hardware. Place the IRS lower cradle assembly next to the rear differential. Install the lower differential bracket assembly to the lower cradle using the provided half inch hardware through the bushing mounts. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. The bracket must be installed with a pinion offset to the passenger side of the bracket center line. Leave the hardware loose for now. Place a block of wood on the cast aluminum cradle. Place the rear differential assembly into the IRS cradle with the back of the differential resting on the block of wood. Install the front of the differential into the lower differential bracket using the provided 716's hardware. Leave the hardware loose for now. Place the provided 716's hardware through the 1 and 1 quarter inch hole that was drilled in the outside frame rail. Install the IRS upper cradle assembly to the frame rails. Install the provided half inch flange head bolts with medium strength blue Loctite on the threads into the nut plates from the bottom side of the frame rails. Make sure the 716 bolts that were installed in the previous step pass through the slot on the upper cradle tab that goes against the inside frame rail. Install the two half inch flange head bolts and slotted shims through the IRS upper cradle assembly that are installed at the rear frame cross member. Use medium strength blue Loctite on the threads of the bolts and tighten. Draw up the IRS upper cradle assembly to the frame by tightening the six half inch bolts from the upper cradle to the frame. Torque all six half inch bolts to 70 foot pounds. <laughs> 
Install the provided 716 flange lock nut on the hardware that was installed in the access hole in the outer frame rail. The flange lock nut should tighten against the slotted tab on the IRS Crail crossmember against the inside frame rail. Torque the 716 fasteners to 50 foot pounds. Before the lower cradle can be installed into the vehicle, you will first need to install the drive shaft into the rear differential. Position the IRS lower cradle differential assembly under the frame using a transmission or floor jack. Make sure the drive shaft is in position before raising the lower cradle to the upper cradle. Center and level the IRS cradle to the frame by using the spherical washers, shims, and 5 8 hardware at the lower differential mount. Remove the block of wood between the IRS lower cradle and the differential. Raise the lower cradle up so the bushing mounts in the differential bracket line up with the bracket in the upper cradle. Install the differential bracket assembly into the IRS upper cradle. Use the provided half inch hardware for the bushing mounts using anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Tighten and torque the 5 8 18 hardware at the lower differential mount to 150 foot pounds. Reassemble the IRS lower and upper cradle together using the 7 16 flange head fasteners using anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Torque the 7 16 fasteners to 50 foot pounds. <sighs> Remove the transmission or floor jack. Torque the half inch fasteners in the upper differential bracket assembly to the upper cradle to 70 foot pounds. <gasps> Torque the half-inch fasteners in the lower differential bracket assembly to 70 foot-pounds. <sighs> Torque the 7 16 fasteners in the differential housing to the mounting bracket to 50 foot-pounds. <sighs> Install the upper IRS trailing link assemblies into the trailing link brackets in the frame rails. The upper links will be installed into the middle hole in the brackets using the provided M14 flanged head bolts and flanged lock nuts. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Install the lower IRS trailing link assemblies into the trailing link brackets. The lower links will be installed into the middle hole in the brackets using the provided M14 flanged head bolts and flanged lock nuts. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Torque the M14 hardware in the upper and lower trailing link assemblies to 120 foot-pounds. Torque all 716 trailing arm bracket bolts to 50 foot-pounds. Next, install the upper IRS letter link assemblies along with the IRS cradle tie braces into the upper cradle cross member using the provided M14 flanged head bolts. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Install the IRS cradle tie braces onto the threads of the upper IRS letter link bolts. Do not torque the M14 bolts at this time. Install the lower IRS letter link assemblies into the lower cradle assembly using the provided M14 fasteners. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Swing the IRS cradle tie braces in position so the bolts go through the lower section of the tie braces. Torque the upper and lower lateral link M14 fasteners to 120 foot-pounds. Install the IRS toe link assemblies into the lower cradle assembly using the provided M14 flanged head bolts and flange lock nuts. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Torque the M14 fasteners to 120 foot-pounds. Next, install the sway bar onto the frame bracket spacers. Start by using the provided super grease, lubricate the inside of the provided 3 quarter inch ID polyurethane bushings 
and install them onto the sway bar. Position the sway bar to the frame bracket spacers and place the sway bar mount bushing brackets over the bushings. Install the sway bar assembly to the frame bracket spacers using the provided 3 8 hardware. Use medium strength blue Loctite on the threads of the bolts. Torque the 3 8 bolts to 35 foot pounds. <laughs> Center the sway bar from side to side in the frame. Next, install the provided three-quarter sway bar split lock collars. Loosen both Allen screws in the lock collars. Apply medium strength blue Loctite on the threads and position the clamps onto the sway bar up against the bushings. Be sure that the clamps are installed so the groove on the two clamps match on either side. Torque the Allen screws to 12 foot-pounds. Install the inner CV joint on the rear half shafts to the stub axles in the rear differential using the provided M10 12-point bolts. Use high-strength red Loctite on the threads of the bolts. Torque the M10 bolts to 57 foot-pounds. Position the rear upright assemblies in place and install the outer CV joint into the rear hubs. Install the hub nut onto the rear half shafts. Do not torque at this time. Install the upper IRS ladder links to the top of the uprights using the provided M14 flange head bolts and flange lock nuts. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Install the lower IRS ladder link clevis to the bottom of the uprights using the provided M14 flange head bolts and flange lock nuts. Use anti-seize on the threads of the bolts. Torque the M14 upright bolts to 120 foot-pounds. Install the lower IRS trailing arm links to the inside of the uprights first, followed by the upper trailing arm links using the provided M14 flange head bolts. Use medium strength blue Loctite on the threads and tighten. Install the IRS tow link assemblies to the back of the uprights using the provided M14 flange head bolts. Use medium strength blue Loctite on the threads. Torque all M14 upright bolts to 120 foot-pounds. Install the sway bar and links into the uprights using the provided M12 flange lock nut. Install the sway bar and link assemblies onto the sway bar using the provided M12 flange lock nut. The body of the end link should be on the outboard side of the sway bar. Hold the end link with a wrench and torque the flange nuts to 45 foot pounds. Before you can install your Detroit Tune JRI Coolover shocks in the DeckLink rear suspension system, we first need to assemble the shock in the spring. So when you take your shocks out of the JRI box, this is the double adjustable remote canister shock. You need to drop the spring perch down, remove this snap ring, and you can remove the spring perch. And the kit includes a Torrington bearing set that you'll want to use extreme high pressure lube on to slide over the top of the shock. This will help us with uh, adjusting the ride height later on. It will be followed by the coilover spring. Put your spring perch back on. Put the snap ring back on the groove so it snaps in place. And just raise that spanner nut up a little bit so you have some preload on the spring. And now we're ready to install it in your Corvette. Position the body side of the shock up into the cross member. Install the provided 3 quarter by 7 8 upper shock spacer onto the provided half inch hex head bolt. Apply medium strength blue Loctite to the threads. Install the bolt and spacer through the front of the cross member mounting hole, through the monoball of the shock, and into the cross member. Do not torque at this time. Install the provided tapered spacers onto both sides of the monoball on the shaft side of the shock. Install the provided half inch fastener through the upright and shock. Use anti seize on the threads of the bolt and install the provided half inch flange lock nut. Torque both the upper and lower shock bolts to 60 foot pounds. Tighten the upright hub nut to the outer CV joint using a 1 5 16 socket. Use high strength red Loctite on the threads and torque to 140 foot pounds. Install the provided 1 and 1 quarter inch recessed body plug in the outer frame rail access hole. We also offer a set of billet aluminum remote canister mounts.
The remote canister hose on the shock body should be pointed to the outboard side of the vehicle. Slide the mount over the canister and locate it on the bottom side of the rear frame cross member with a marker. Measure from the inside of the sway bar spacer to the marked location. Mark a location on the opposite side of the frame cross member using your measurement. Drill a 5 second hole at your marked location. Tap the drill hole with a 1024 tap size. Mount the canisters to the cross member using the provided 1024 button head screw in the tapped hole and tighten. This concludes the body on installation of the Detroit Speed Decklink Independent Rear Suspension System. If you have any questions, contact our sales and tech department at 704 662 3272 or visit our website at DetroitSpeed.com.